Hi, Alice here, and in this video we'll be exploring the valuation of accounts receivable at period end using the allowance method. In my last video I talked about the direct write-off method and how we generally can't use it because it violates both expense and asset elements. I asked what method can we use so our assets are appropriately valued in 2014 and we record our bad debt expense in 2014, the same year as the related revenue. That would allow us to follow the definition of both the element assets, which need to be valued at their future economic benefit, and the element expense, which have to be recorded in the same period as the related revenue. I called it the allowance method. Let's look at how it works. Let's assume we're back at December 31st, 2014. Our accounts receivable are $360,000 on the balance sheet. We know that when we sell on credit, there will always be a problem with collections. Some of our customers will never pay. The more we sell on credit, the greater the risk that there will be a problem with collections. Now, we know that some customers won't pay, but on December 31st, 2014, we can't really say which customers won't pay. After all, if we knew for sure that they weren't going to pay us, we'd get rid of these accounts receivable right away. We don't know specifics, we just know that generally a certain amount of customers are not going to pay. How do companies handle this uncertainty? Well, they guess. When I say guess, I mean an educated guess, one that's based on the facts from the past and expectations about the future. Companies look at their accounts receivable history, at the industry overall, and finally at the economy in order to estimate the amount of accounts receivable that they think won't be collected in the upcoming 12 months. Using this estimate of uncollectible accounts, they are in a better position to value accounts receivable at year end and to match the expenses to the revenue it helped to generate in that year. Let's look at an example on how this is done. ABC Company has accounts receivable of $360,000 at December 31st, 2014 and revenues of $1,450,000. Remember that this is the first year of operations for the company. Although management does not have much experience, they use what's happening in their industry and the economy to estimate that $25,000 of the current accounts receivable of $360,000 will not be collected in the upcoming year. What entry should the company make? You might say that ABC Company should decrease their accounts receivable by $25,000, but you would be wrong. We don't know which customers will go bad, so we can't put our estimate against actual customer amounts. When we make an estimate, we can't touch the accounts receivable account. Instead, what we need is a contra asset account, a negative amount that will go against accounts receivable so that, when added together, the accounts receivable is equal to their future economic benefit. That account is called the Allowance for Doubtful Accounts, the short form AFDA or AFDA. It's a contra asset account similar to the accumulated depreciation account that we learned about on our financial statement video and in our adjusting entry videos. The Allowance for Doubtful Accounts belongs in the element Assets because it's a negative asset account. It's recorded immediately under Accounts Receivable on the balance sheet so that Accounts Receivable is now valued at its estimated future economic benefit. Okay. That's great, but what's the other side of the entry to record the estimated uncollectible amount for 2014? Under the element assets, we would record negative 25,000 to the allowance for doubtful accounts, or AFTA. Under equity, we would record negative $25,000 to the bad debt expense account. If we do this, would the problems we discovered when we were using the direct write-off method disappear? Yes because it would reduce assets to their estimated future cash value and match expenses to the revenues they helped to generate in 2014. So, on our balance sheet we would show the following under current assets. Accounts receivable $360,000, allowance for doubtful accounts negative $25,000. We don't have to put a negative in front of the $25,000 because the word less is in front of the words allowance for doubtful accounts, which indicates that $25,000 is negative. Net realizable value, the value that we'll realize in cash over the next 12 months, is therefore $335,000. That is a future economic benefit that we expect to receive from these accounts receivable. All right. Now, on our income statement, what would show? Revenues would be at $1,450,000. Remember, this includes $360,000 of revenue that we sold but have not as yet received in cash. Expenses would include the bad debt expense of $25,000. Notice the bad debt expense of $25,000 is recorded in the same year as the related revenue, so we are matching our expenses to the revenue they help to generate. 
By using the allowance method, we've solved the two problems we had in 2014 and 2015 under the direct write-off method. Using the allowance method, our accounts receivable are at their future economic benefit, and the expenses are in the same year as the revenues they helped to generate. Excellent. Moving into the next year, 2015, how will we record write-offs when they happened, and what if a customer pays their accounts receivable after we've written that customer off? Well, that's the topic of our next video.